Hi, Sam. Okay. Are you okay? All good. Yeah, Sully, Sully and Manella playing on the bed. I'll get them out here now. <laughs> oh, yeah. How's Bianca? Yeah, she's all good. She's good. Um, yeah. I think you're in, it's, oh yeah, it's recording, yeah. Okay, let's get everyone in and let's get ready to rumble. I don't think anyone's in the waiting room, yeah. I think Susan Jones is in. Oh, she, I can't see her name. Okay, I'll admit her. Should I admit her? Oh, I think you, you must be in control because I can't see okay. her. Okay, I can admit her. Do you want to get the... um? Get the presentation ready. Um, it's saying host is disabled, participant screen sharing. Um, okay. I think it's got you as the host. So, is it in Canva? Yeah. Oh wait, there. I've just. I think I can do it now. Two seconds. Okay. I just put, press reclaim host or something, and it seems to let me do it now. Okay. Perfect. Yep. That's cool. You see that? Yeah. Cool. Well, that's Susan Jones now. Oh, she hasn't. Okay, yeah, I can't see her now. Yeah, I think I've taken it off you now. Oh, oh there we are. No offense, I'll have the power. Stealing my thunder, that's okay. <laughs> I don't mind. Okay. Give it, well, you give it another minute or should we just uh, get going? Let's just get going, yes. Yeah, so... Okay, uh, full screen. Oh, let's get to the first slide first. Okay. Oh, look, okay, your side, Sam. Oh, look, great, yeah. Okay, great. Right, so let's kick it off then. So, um, yes, yeah, so new training this week, guys. So um, I don't know actually how many parts there's going to be to this because um, the more I'm delving into the subject of breathing, the more sort of stuff I'm finding I want to talk about. So, um, yeah, I'm going to leave this open-ended for a minute. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to be talking over the next few weeks about the power of breathing because um, we put the post out last week asking, you know, so, some of the sort of things you guys want to learn about. And this is one of the topics that came up. And it's it's one of those things at the moment. I don't know if you agree, Sam. It seems to be like a new thing in the fitness industry. People are starting to focus on breathing a lot more. Like you've had Wim Hof and stuff like that, haven't you? Yeah. Well, it's funny. With the fitness industry, things come and come and go. You know, um, for a lot of the new, new... I was speaking to a new personal trainer on um, who's doing our PT course. Obviously, we, we run the academy. And he was like, oh, the ketogenic diet, it's, it's like, it's amazing, isn't it? You know? <laughs> and I was like, well... This, this, is the, this is the second time in my personal training, you know, realm that it's, it's come back around. And I, I'm sure we're going to see, you know, the emergence now of, of, of like kettlebells coming back in, you know, and, and, think, and, th and things like that. You know, it seems at the moment, obviously, you know, like with like CrossFit was big in the early 2000s, whereas Olymp and, that, and that's led to, you know, the emergence of Olympic weightlifting getting back uh, very popular with the Olympics and people taking more of an interest in that. But, you know, that's been something that's been going on for years. Um, I think breathwork is something that's been around for a very, very long time. Um, and it always sort of gets talked about with people that understand the importance of it. Um, you know, and, and, and the biggest thing about tonight's webinar, I think, and if, for those that are, the people that are on it and watch on the replay, like it's massive. Like how, how long can you survive without food? We're talking weeks. How long can you survive without water? We're talking probably, you know, a week. How long can you survive without oxygen? Like you will die within like five minutes, you know? So yeah. it, it, to, to say it's like only now coming in poor and is, is, but I know what you mean, yeah, it is only now becoming as, as widely. And I think that's to the social media. Um, I think we're a lot more aware now of what other people are doing. Um, but yeah, breath work is massive and it's been around for a long time and yogis have been studying it for, for years and years and years because the, the positive effect it has on the, you know, the immune system and the nervous system and, and the relaxation effect it has on muscles, it controls the, the whole, the whole body, you know, without it, you, um, you die, you know, which is, which is, which is crazy. So um, it, it's absolutely vital, but I, I definitely agree. Yeah. It's definitely a hot topic at the moment mm -hmm. um, with a lot of podcasts and webinars and, and, you know, even just normal personal trainers now realizing the importance in regards to the immune system and, and flexibility and fascia and fat loss as well to a certain degree. So, yeah, I'm coming for these um, these series, but I know what you mean. It could be easily be five or six webinars. Yeah, and yeah, I'll see if I can read myself in because again, uh, it's it's really interesting delving into it. Um, but yeah, like it's it's sort of that, that more holistic approach to everything now. It's not just about 
the training or the nutrition, like we say, we're, we're taking more consideration of things like sleep and, and um, breathing because people seem to be a lot more, I don't know, people are a lot more concerned about their health nowadays. So they're, they're taking interest in these other things which are going to, you know, overall like benefit them really. I think COVID as well has obviously really attacked the respiratory system, people's ability yeah. to, to utilize um, the breath well. Um, so I think when something gets taken away from you, obviously it becomes even more important, right? You know, uh, when you, if you get your health taken away with you, the health scare, it's like so many people have, have, have gone on to become really fit after having a heart attack or after having a stroke, you know, and, you know, not, we don't want to be reactive by any means, but sometimes people do need like a small wake up call um, to make that change, you know? So obviously, hopefully this, this webinar tonight will inspire a few people to, not let anything bad happen to, to start taking control of um, of their health and, and the breath is obviously directly linked to that. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, so in terms of like tonight's sort of um, episode call, whatever you want to call it, we're going to be sort of looking more at the, the, the signs, getting those, found, like trying to get you that sort of foundation knowledge in place. So, you know, it gives you the power to sort of start taking action really. So yeah, we want to give you the knowledge and then give you, and then hopefully that gives you some things to sort of work on. So um some of the topics we're looking at tonight is, you know, I'm going to give you just an overall introduction to, to breathing, as silly as that sounds, uh, and its influence on sort of health and performance. Uh, we're going to really touch on the respiratory system ever so like briefly, because um, you don't know the, need to know these ins and outs, you just need to know what it is basically. Um, and then sort of describe and explain this new thing, this sort of like, well, not new thing. It's, um, I think it's been going on for a while and becoming increasingly you know, more widespread is this sort of topic of over breathing um, and that's and what how that influences uh, health and performance and we're also going to talk a lot you're probably going to get sick of me talking about carbon dioxide by the end of this training but it plays a big big role in the res respiratory process so um, yeah we're going to talk a lot about that which yeah you know when you think of respiratory system sometimes you think about oxygen you know which you know that is a big part of it but carbon dioxide has a big influence on the whole running of that system. So yeah, we're going to go into the, the science of that. Um, okay, so yeah, the introduction to, to breathing. So Sam, uh, I think he's read this in advance. He's done his homework. So yeah, we can survive the food without weeks. Um, water for maybe a day, be air, air, hold your breath, see how long you last. Don't do that. Um, it's not going to be long. So, um, and in terms of like breathing, it's one of those things that it can be taken for granted a little bit because we just assume that, you know, we should know how to breathe. Our body just figures that out. It's, a, it's quite involuntary in some ways, the, the process of breathing. Um, but it actually has become a, a lot more of a challenge in sort of modern life, the way things are going based on how our lifestyles are. Um, and so, yeah, it's like, you know, things like cr chronic stress, sedentary lifestyles, unhealthy diets, eating lots of processed foods, um, overheated homes, sorry, uh, and then like, and lack of fitness all influence our respiratory system and how it works. Um, so yeah, and that can, ha and that also lead to lead to um, poor breathing habits, which then affects our energy. You know, we feel a bit more lethargic because we can't utilize the oxygen the way we need to. Um, you know that, and then we're not moving much. That can that can impact on weight gain. You know, if you're consuming too many calories, not moving much, you know, energy expenditure um, intake is greater, leads to weight gain. Uh, yeah, it can, it can affect sleep can lead to respiratory condition, conditions and also sort of heart disease as well. So yeah, in terms of our modern life, um, breathing has been massively um, impacted. And what we're going to talk about tonight is, yeah, we're going to talk about over breathing more and why, you know, it's not necessarily a good thing, uh, but we're also going to touch on sort of light breathing, which is what the, the goal is really, and it is more of a testament to, to health and fitness. Um, okay, so quick touch on the respiratory system. Um, so yeah, it basically comprises of all the parts of the body that deliver oxygen from the atmosphere. So the air around us, uh, to our cells and tissues. Okay. Um, and oxygen is the fuel that our muscles need to be able to work efficiently. Um, but what it also does is transports carbon dioxide, which is produced in our tissues out to the atmosphere. So we breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. Okay. Um, so yeah, in terms of when we breathe, so this is just just a little graphic of your respiratory system here. Air goes through the trachea, splits through the, uh, the bronchi, which go into the, the left and right lung separately. These go into bronchioles and then into little air sacs called alveoli, okay? Um, like I say, you don't need to know too much about it. It's just a brief idea of what it is. So, but the key thing here is, you know, if we allow our 
respiratory system to function properly, then you know we're going to make sure we get an adequate supply of oxygen to the the muscles, which in terms of like you new know, training performance and general day to day life, that sort of thing, it's going to mean our organs, our tissues, our muscles are getting you know the supply they need in order to function the most optimally basically. Um, because you know if it's not working properly then this is what the, this is where transcends and sort of over breathing and you know over time ex breathing too much is going to take the toll on the body and it's going to lead to some chemical biochemical changes which are not necessarily going to be the best thing for us in the long term okay so yeah over breathing i said it, like sort of touched like it's um you know quite widespread nowadays so due to our sort of you know, modern lifestyle. So, and it's actually been described as some, some people as a bit of like a, an epidemic almost. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much majority of people over breathe in the sort of the industrial, industrial, can't say that word, industrialized world. And like I say, over a long period of time, it can be very detrimental to health. Um, so yeah, it can lead to loss of health, poor fitness and compromised performance. Um, and it contributes to things like anxiety, asthma, fatigue, insomnia, heart problems, the list goes on. I used to say this a lot with like, like I, in the sleep seminars, I used to say like sleep is like the foundation to health. And, and Sam said it earlier, like breathing is also very, very important. So breathing literally, it positively impacts all of your, your health, every aspect of it. Would you agree, Sam? The more I'm reading about it, and I've literally just, I've read, I've read a lot of the Auction Advantage. I've just ordered more of the books now. Um, the same author uh, that wrote the Auction Advantage, he's got a book out called um, uh, Close Your Mouth. Close Your Mouth, Save Your Life. And it's yeah. all about nasal breathing. So I've ordered that as well. But yeah, the more I'm reading about it, the more I'm like, you know, like getting obsessed with it. It's, um, it's, it's yeah. so fascinating. And when you say to clients, like, why do you train? Oh, I, I, you know, I train to improve my health. Like how much of that time do they spend on their nutrition? Okay, you know, and if, if you think about it like this, if you train optimally, what are you going to do to your, your lifespan, your life expectancy? If you train optimally, you're probably going to live longer. Hmm. If you eat optimally, you're probably going to live longer. You know, if you sleep optimally, you're going to, you're going to live longer. But we never talk about breathing optimally. Yet breathing is the one thing that's the most important out of all those because that way you die the soonest. So... Yeah. But arguably, we're spending so much time on the on the training, the nutrition, um, and, and 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 arguably a bit more now on the, the other lifestyle stuff like activity, sleep, managing stress. But all those really, in regards to the hierarchy of importance for life, they're all relatively insignificant in regards to the breath. Mm. So if we're not breathing optimally, then we are definitely um, reducing our life expectancy. You know, and there's lots of research coming out now about what happens when you do breathe optimally. And um, we'll go into this in more depth. I'll, if, you, if you don't touch it, I'll go into it in more depth later on. But when you do breathe optimally, loads of positive things happen from the, the internal organs, the immune system, the nervous system, the respiratory system. It all work, works together. So, yeah, I think it is the most important thing in terms of life expectancy, even more important than the training and the nutrition. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> don't breathe. won't last very long, will you? So uh, it doesn't matter about training and nutrition then. Um, yeah. Cool. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, we've talked about it, it's an issue, but what is it? So overbreathing is the easier way to say it. It's also, it's technically known as chronic hyperventilation, uh, if you want to be fancy about it. Uh, but yeah, simply means it's, it's, it's habits of breathing and the amount of air, which is more than what we actually need. Um, so, you know, overbreathing is like dramatic as it sounds. It's not like the, the like, like, like I've got written on the slide there. It's not like so much the symptoms you would see someone have having a panic, panic attack where they, they're gasping, they can't get enough air in that sort of thing. It's just like, you know, it's just, it's just poor breathing habits basically. And it's, it's something which is not easily identified. Um, and the, the symptoms as well of overbreathing are, are quite erratic. I, I touch on this later, but, um, you know, they're very individual to the person. They're not necessarily linked. It's a load of different things which, which can get in if you're not breathing correctly, as uh, so you're very hard to identify, but majority of people probably aren't breathing the most efficient way possible and most optimal way. Um, so yeah, the, the, the impact of that then is, you know, when we're breathing in excess of what is actually required, too much carbon dioxide is removed from the blood and exhaled from the lungs, like I said earlier, into the atmosphere. And basically what that does then, it makes it actually more difficult to utilize oxygen. 
So even though, like, you know, when we think of breathing, we think of oxygen as being one of the key players, carbon dioxide, I, I, I think now is actually the, the key player when we start looking at these things in terms of what that influences in terms of the body. Um, and yeah, like I said, like, you know, over breathing in, in a sh over a short period of time, that's not going to be like have a dramatic effect, but chronic, like over an extended period of time, you're talking months, years, that's going to have um, a negative effect. And which basically means like, you know, as part of that, we're going to have either increased sensitivity to carbon dioxide or a lower tolerance to it. And what we've got in the brain is um, receptors. So, you know, these receptors monitor how much carbon dioxide is in the blood. And then if we've got like um, a lower tolerance rate or increased sensitivity, that set point that the body is looking for is, you know, impacted in some way. So it's, it's, it drops down. So with a lower set point, what happens then is, you know, it reads we've got X amount of carbon dioxide in the, in the body, in the blood or, you know, in the tissues. Um, and the, the brain's like, right, we need to clear this. We've got too much. It starts ramping up the breathing pattern in order to get that carbon dioxide out. So it actually like stimulates more over breathing really. So then becomes a bit of a vicious circle and um, we can't, you know, get out of it without making a conscious effort to improve it and to improve your habits. Um, so then I've lost my train of thought. So basically yes. um, what Zoe's saying is you need to breathe properly. Now, if I say to the clients, take a deep breath, they often do this. <sighs> Now that's not a deep breath. When we talk, when 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 we when we mean a deep breath, we mean to breathe from our diaphragm. Now, in order to get to get your di to do diaphragmatic breathing, you need to breathe breathe through your nose. Okay, that's what's regarded as a deep breath. So, over the years, um, I think that the message has got a little bit confused. Where we say, right, take a deep breath, you know, and people do it automatically through their mouth. Well, that's not the way we're designed to breathe. Babies, they breathe through their nose. We're born to breathe through our nose. All animals breathe through their nose dogs are the only animal that potentially sometimes breathe through their mouth and that's when it's a hot day all right the only time we were designed to breathe through our mouths was in a flight or fight response when we were cavemen we could be getting chased by a saber-toothed tiger so when we breathe through our, our mouths our bodies are the same we're the same human species as we were all those years ago so when we, we're doing um, mouth breaths it obviously has um we, we're not using our diaphragm it has a positive effect on on cortisol Chest breathing is not good for, um, you know, stimulating the part of the nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, which is when we relax. When we do nasal breathing, loads of positive things happen, like Zoe just explained. We have the, we have the, um, the positive effect of CO2, you know, and that means that our, our organs then get more oxygen. So by breathing through our nose, that's a deep breath, okay? The best breathers are the ones where you can't hear them breathe, okay? So that, that's a little bit of a, a, a thing about correct breathing. And these are obviously all the benefits of that correct breathing, but correct breathing is actually nasal breathing. It isn't breathing through your mouth. And that's what a lot of the um, the, the things we'll teach. So from the auction advantage, they, they teach how to do that effectively, don't they? Yeah. So like I noticed, um, I haven't quite got to that chapter yet, but uh, one yeah. of the chapters is actually called um, like breathing, your mouth's for eating and your nose is for breathing. So that, that's and, and cool there. This is a big thing as well with nasal breathing. When you breathe, breathe through your nose, your body releases nitric oxide. Okay, nitric oxide, as we know, is a vasodilator, so it opens up all the arteries. So when you breathe through the, your nose, even though you, you're potentially taking the same amount of oxygen as you do when you breathe through the mouth, your organs get more oxygen when you when you nasal breathe. Nitric oxide as well also cleans the air. So if I give you a dirty cup of water, would you drink it? No, you wouldn't. But potentially when you, well, not potentially, in reality, when you breathe oxygen in from the air through your mouth, your your nasal nasal breathing cleans the air it purifies the air so when we're doing mouth breathing we're not cleaning the air so we're taking in all that pollution into our organs okay which is why i said to you earlier about the, the breath is actually one of the best things you can learn to do to improve life expectancy imagine you, how many breath, breaths do you take a day fuck like who knows right like too many right <laughs> like you probably it is the recommended or something like that or like the medical <laughs> norm Exactly. Now, imagine every single one of those breaths hasn't been purified. You live in, in, in Tokyo or China or London or Cardiff City Centre. You're breathing in all those fumes, you know. Those fumes are then going into your tissue, you know. And that's, what, that's why we've seen, you know, it's one of the reasons why we've seen an increase in autoimmune diseases and other things like, you know, like 
bad things that are happening, you know, um, in terms of illnesses and stuff, because our body isn't purifying the air. And if you do nasal breathing, that's the body's way of doing that. But, you know, I guess when we were cavemen, uh, all those years ago, we didn't know that we'd be flying airplanes and having stressful jobs and working night shifts and, you know, so our bodies are not used to the stress and the pollution that is around today. But if we breathe properly, our bodies do have the mechanisms to clean and purify the air and obviously combat um, disease too. So there's a few things on that, yeah. So yeah, proper yeah. breathing is nasal breathing. Yes, breathing through your nose. And like I often yeah. say, like I sometimes say it, like when I do a boot camp or something, I'm like, right guys, recover, like take, breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. I try and encourage them to, to nasal breathe. Cause like, like say the, the, the natural response is to like, is gasp. <gasps> and it's like, no, <laughs> like you're actually making it worse for yourself. Um, yeah, yeah, you just, when, you, when you breathe through your mouth, you, you actually intensify the stress response. You make it even worse. So yeah, worse I, think, I think we actually touched on that briefly in one of the, the previous trainings. It might've been, might've been the aerobic one that we did on the, on the aerobic pathway where I said like in rest periods in the gym, like we were talking about people jogging around and, and, and moving. Um, but like, you know, the, the rest period, you know, that should be trying to bring your body back into this sort of parasympathetic state. And one of the ways to signal that to the body is by breathing through your nose, controlling it, because it's telling your body, no, we're fine. Everything's in control. You can relax, de-stress out of that flight or flight mode. And, you know, and then you recover better and then you perform better going into the next set, potentially. And, and that's it. Like a deep breath means breathe deep into your tummy. And the way you do that, like I said, is nasal breathing. But people think of deep breath as in, oh, let's take in as much air as I can in one go. But that's yeah. chest breathing, you know. And then what happens then is, like, I'm going off on a tangent now, but I, I think people are like it. Slow, pe people that breathe badly as well, they get a lot of shoulder injuries, you know. Um, why? Because they breathe in all day using their chest. Okay, imagine you did press-ups all day. What would happen? These muscles are going to tighten up, whereas if you're breathing in your chest all day, potentially that's going to cause a bit more internal rotation. Subclavus is going to get tight. Yeah, rounded shoulders. That's just one other um, disadvantage of obviously um, of, of, of poor breathing mechanics. Just one of the many. Um, we'll, we'll cover more, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's again. That's, that's some of those things can be down to lifestyle. It's like. You know, we're, we're hunched over our desk, so naturally more people are internally rotated nowadays. So then you have that, you know, it has an, it just has a knock-on impact on everything, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, breathing, breathing through your mouth overuses these muscles on the chest for sure. Yeah. So I'm not going to spend too long on this one. I just chucked it in for, to give you guys a little look here. I'm not diagnosing anyone. Um, it's just some, you know, questions that you can use to, you know, have a, have a little bit of think about some of the habits you have. Um and whether they could be a sign of breathing. Like I say, I'm not diagnosing anyone. It's just something to, to think about. So yeah, these questions here, you know, if you have a look at them, if you're watching back, pause it here and just go through them one by one, take your time with it. You don't have to do it now. Um, but, you know, if you answer yes to some of these questions, all these questions, it could, it, it could indicate there's something, you know, you're not breathing the most optimally. Um, so yeah, some of the things here that I, you know, I'll highlight. Um, so yeah, breathing through your mouth, during sleep and even breathing through your mouth in the day um, has been found to have a, a big impact in terms of energy levels and stuff like that. So it's, I think it's said in the book, um, The Oxygen Advantage, that, you know, people who, who breathe through their mouth at night often struggled in the morning with waking up and stuff like that. And it'd actually take them a few hours to actually sort of come around and not feel so lethargic and groggy. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that was one I, thought I found quite interesting. Um, I don't know, anyone's anyone's you there you find interesting, Sam? I think if you snow, if, if you sleep next, you know, if you snore, that's a, a massive sign that you're not getting a good night's sleep. Uh, obviously, snoring is linked to like sleep sleep apnea. Some people wake themselves up when they actually snore, but that shows that you are a mouth breather as well. And um, I'll I'll put the YouTube video on as well. If you breathe through your mouth, all right, it changes the structure of your face. It changes the structure of your nose as well. So people that breathe through their mouth tend to have as they get older, they tend to have more crooked teeth. Because the, the, when you nasal breathe, your tongue sits at the roof of the roof of the mouth. It sits there when you nasal breathe. But if you if you mouth breathe, the tongue has to sit at the bottom. So it can affect your teeth structure. Also, people as they get older who do a lot of mouth breathing, they get a, a, like an L, like a long face. Okay, and what happens is with the jaw, it tends to sit back a bit more. So it can lead to like you know looking a bit older than you um, you are. And their noses tend to creak down and, and become a little bit more pointier because they're not using 
the, the, the note, and it's a really good YouTube video, a TED talk um, from the gentleman that read the, the oxygen advantage on how, like long term, if you're a mouth breather, it can affect the structure of your face, which is crazy. It's bonkers. I have to watch that. that you know, if you do, if you do, if you do like um, you know, forearm curls all day, you know, uh, what's going to happen? You end up with elbow pain because your forearm just gets so tight, your brachioradialis muscles just going to get grumpy. All right, so we're not talking about breathing through your nose for, for your mouth for one day, changing the way you look, but we're talking about years and decades of, of the wrong breathing, laying different muscles in the in the face into different alignment and stuff. So, yeah, we can put the TED Talk um, in here. Maybe it can be a, a slide for the next presentation. Because when I was watching, I was like, holy fuck, is that, that, is, a, that is crazy. You know, it was like, yeah. this is amazing. So, yeah, the breath has a massive impact on the way you, you, you look too. Cool. Um, okay, so we've got delving more into sort of the, the sciencey aspect of it. Um, so in terms of like breathing itself, there's sort of you know two main aspects of the way we actually breathe, uh, and that's the the rate of breaths we take in one minute, so the amount of breaths, um, which I think I mentioned earlier was you know I think the medically you know norm uh, is like ten to twelve a minute uh, breaths, and then also you've got the uh, the volume of air which is drawn into the lungs with each breath. Uh, but I can't remember the number for that now. I think it's 500 mils or something like that, which is considered like the norm in terms of how much we should take in ideally. Um, and then the, so the rates of our breathing and the volume of, you know, our breathing is determined by receptors in the brain. So, you know, this works in a very similar way to like a, a thermostat in your house. So it's always switched on. And what is these receptors are doing is monitoring the concentration of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the blood. And it also have to, has a look at um, acidity and, and pH level as well. Um, so yeah, when carbon dioxide in the blood goes over a certain level, these, re these receptors will then stimulate uh, breathing in order to get rid of excess amounts of carbon dioxide to stop it building up. Um, so yeah, like, like I say, the, the key thing these receptors are looking out for is carbon dioxide, which makes it one of the, you know, one of the, well, the primary stimulus for breathing regulation, okay? So it's all about trying to keep those levels in line with where, you know, where the body wants it to be in terms of maintaining um, homeostasis. Um, so yeah, carbon dioxide, you know, back in high school biology, when we learned about breathing and that sort of stuff, it was all about oxygen and how that was used and stuff like that. And, and carbon dioxide was just this waste gas, which was released from the body and it wasn't really a big deal. Uh, but actually that's not really the case as what we might be finding out reading the, so in, into it. Um, so in terms of carbon dioxide, just a little bit of background on it. It's produced in tissues and cells when we're converting food and oxygen into energy. So it is a, it is a waste product in some sense, um, but it does perform a number of like vital functions in the body, which we'll touch on these a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, the offloading of oxygen from the blood to be used by the cells, dilation of smooth muscle in the walls of the airways and blood vessels, which helps with circulation and also regulation of, of blood pH. Um, so yeah, correct breathing pretty much relies on and results in the amount of, or having the right amount of carbon dioxide being retained in the lungs. So we, when we breathe, we don't get, we don't release all of the carbon dioxide because we want to hold some back because we do actually need some in the body, like I said earlier, to, to offload oxygen into the blood. So it, it is a bit of a two and four sort of process. So yeah, so uh, well, I've sort of said it there, but carbon dioxide acts like a doorway and it lets oxygen into the muscle. So if we have too little, that door is partially closed, which means we can't get as much oxygen through. When we have enough, that door is open, we get much more oxygen coming through them. So like, you know, when we're not getting enough, that's when you might find yourself gasping for air, uh, you start getting muscle cramp and stuff like that, because like I say, we can't get oxygen into the muscle. Uh, but then if we can get enough in, you know, that's when we can, you know, sustain, you know, bouts of physical activity for longer and at a higher intensity. So that's where the, you know, the, the benefit to performance uh, comes into play. It's crazy, isn't it? Because you, you always think, oh, when you're out of breath, you've got to breathe to get more oxygen in, but you, you, the, blood, the oxygen in your blood is always between 95 and 99%, and it never really gets to 100%. So when, we breathe, when we're breathing in, it's not to get more oxygen into our blood, it's to just make sure there's enough oxygen in the blood so that relationship with the, the hemoglobin and the carbon dioxide can release the oxygen into the, into the, um, into the working organs. Okay, because oxygen in the blood doesn't necessarily mean oxygen getting into the vital organs. So, um, yeah, it's all about the relationship between oxygen and CO2 and hemoglobin. And, um, yeah, that's why we want it. And, and like I said, the nitric oxide, when you nasal breathe, it vasodilates 
dilates the arteries, so it makes that, you know, imagine imagine 100 people trying to get into next because there's a January sale and the door is like this big, yeah? Whereas imagine, but they're not, are they? The doors are massive. You can fit like 30 people in, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's efficiency. So they know the more people they can get in their shop on January the 1st or Boxing Day, whatever it is, the more sales they're going to make. If, it, if it's hard to get in, they're going to think, oh, you know what? I'm not going to bother. And that's what nitric oxide does. And that's the benefit of nasal breathing. It opens up the, the doors of the shop. So you get more energy to the um, working muscles. Good idea. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so delving a little deeper. So one of the things I mentioned on the previous slide was, you know, the relationship between carbon dioxide and oxygen um, in terms of getting oxygen into the, into the uh, muscle. And this is, is basically what's um, known as sort of the Bohr effect. So simple terms, the Bohr effect is the way in which oxygen is released from hemoglobin and delivered to the mu muscles and organs. Now, hemoglobin is a, um, it's a protein which is found in the blood and its role is to carry oxygen from the lungs through the blood to the tissues and cells where we need it in order to be utilized. And this was discovered by um, Christian Bohr in 1904. So it's just, you know, old science, but still very relative science. Uh, so don't give a steal his words here. So um, yeah, he says that carbon dioxide pressure is to be regarded as an important factor in the inner respiratory metabolism. So if one uses carbon dioxide in appropriate amounts, the oxygen that was taken up can be used more effectively throughout the body. And as we're going to keep saying, you know, the, the better the body can utilize oxygen, the better life expectancy is going to be, the better performance is going to be, and the better your health, like your health is going to be in the way your body's functioning. Um, so yeah, in terms of, you know, touching on, we talked about over breathing earlier. So yeah, when we over breathe too much carbon dioxide is washed from the lungs, um, tissues and cells, which leads to something called hypocapnia. Um, and that, what that happens then is it causes hemoglobin to hold onto the oxygen. So, and then, you know, if we can't, get the oxygen out from, or from hemoglobin and into the you know the tissues and the cells it means we can't use it so it's there like say like sam said in circulation you know the blood saturate with oxygen um but we just can't use it if, we, if we're over breathing and releasing too much carbon dioxide so you see like say guys it just becomes a, a vicious cycle we get we get stuck in um so yeah in terms of you know unlocking your true potential in terms of performance yeah this is something we really need to you know, consider and be aware of, you know, we want to work on our breathing, make sure we're, we, you know, we're building these positive habits and trying to stop these negative ones. And, you know, in terms of results, then you're going to get the results you really want. Would you agree with that, Sam? Well, definitely. I remember um, the first experience I had with nasal breathing was, um, it, it was probably working with, with Gav with the boxers, because you think about boxing, they have three minutes where their, their aim is to be able to exert as much energy as possible, but it's 12 three-minute rounds. So there's no good going balls to the walls for three minutes and then not being able to recover for the next round. So a bit like I've seen you doing with Susan, who's on the um, obviously on the call, you've got to do a nasal breathing in between sets to bring her heart rate down. That means then that her, she has more gears to go through. You know, if you're always driving in, in fourth gear, you know, you've only got one gear to, to whack it up to, to maybe win the race or, or whatever it is. But if you can always go back down to gear one, you can go gear two, gear three, gear four, gear five. And that's what we found with the boxers is um, in that 60 seconds, can we bring their heart rate back down? You know, relax the stress response. Obviously, when your heart rate is high, lactate is going to accumulate quicker. When lactate is high, coordination um, obviously is the first thing to go. The second thing to go then is obviously your concentration as well. Um, so being able to bring their heart rate down with deep breaths, nasal breaths into the diaphragm has a positive effect on, um, on performance, you know, so from a performance point of view, 100%. And then obviously from a training point of view, if you're doing things like giant sets, tri sets, GBC, you know, if you can bring your heart rate down in 10 to 15 seconds more efficiently than someone that needs a minute to do that, you're going to get more work done, more volume done. You're going to be more efficient with your workout. So, um, so yeah, it's absolutely massive. Yeah, because often it's, it's not necessarily like your arms or your legs that let you down. It's, it's the lungs, really. It's just not being able to catch up with yourself and get your breath, is it? Yeah, exactly. So I find that, like, when I do, like, high rep squats, uh, like, I remember Gav put me on a program before, and it, it was, like, four sets of 25 reps on the squat. And it wasn't the weight of the issue. I just, I couldn't breathe. You must have not bought my coffee on a Monday or something like that. I was just doing that. Yeah, I, bought some, I did something to annoy him, clearly. Yeah, four <laughs> sets of 25 and three 90-minute cardio sessions a week. Christ. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yes, touching on breathing and, and sort of circulation um, now. So yeah, breathing too much. Um, there's also a link there with a reduction in blood flow as well. So um, so an example here, so it's even two minutes of, of heavy breathing or over breathing, however you want to call it, is enough to have a, an impact on blood circulation, actually reduce it, um, which then, you know, if it's, you know, circulation is, is reduced, we're not getting blood to the, uh, the brain and some other organs, and that can lead to, you know, in terms of the brain, it can lead to feelings of dizziness and lightheadedness as well. Um, and again, carbon dioxide has a role to play here. So it's been found that blood flow to the brain reduces proportionately to each reduction in carbon dioxide. So if we're over breathing, we're releasing too much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, that's going to restrict blood flow to the brain. Uh, so yeah, dizziness, lightheadedness, you know, you're not going to be able to, you know, function as well, really, guys. So um, yeah, that's not, that's not great when you're trying to you know, perform at your best and get the best results you can from your training or, or wherever you might be doing. Um, and then, yeah, just a study to back it up. So a um, study by Daniel M. Gibbs. So he was looking at arterial constriction. So in terms of like, you know, the blood vessels and it was found that excessive breathing, so over breathing, found that diameter of blood vessels were reduced in some individuals as much as 50%. So again, it's reducing the blood flow around the body. You know, our muscles, they need blood to contract and work. Our organs need blood, you know, we need it to be able to function. So um, yeah, that just shows you how radically over breathing can ha have an effect on um, blood flow. Anything you want to add there, Sam? Oh, that's everything. Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, and then we, I mentioned earlier as well, like, uh, you know, our breathing can affect blood pH as well. So uh, again, carbon dioxide, I'm going to get sick of staying it, plays an important role uh, in terms of pH level and regulation. So, you know, the body likes to maintain homeostasis. We want to be in a certain range for pretty much everything. And there's no difference to blood pH as well. So you know, normal pH is about 7.365. We ideally want to be in the range of 6.8 to 7.8. Um, if we fall outside of those ranges, it's not good and can be fatal. So, um, yeah, the body is, you know, regularly monitors this and wants to keep it within the ranges. And what happens then is if the blood becomes more alkaline, so, you know, drops below that 6.8, I think that's the right way around, um, breathing reduces to allow carbon dioxide to build back up in the body. Uh, so, you know, levels rise, pH is restored, and then the, the body relaxes, things are back to how it wants it, and it carries on. Uh, the, you know, the flip to that is if the blood is too acidic, then breathing increases because there's too much carbon dioxide, which is causing that, you know, causing that reaction. So then breathing gets ramped up as we're trying to get rid of it, and then eventually it normalizes again and, and sorts itself out. Um, so, yeah, maintaining blood pH is vital to survival. If it drops out of those ranges I mentioned earlier, yes, it can be fatal. Um, and this is because, you know, our pH affects, you know, the ability of the organs and metabolism to, to function correctly, basically. Uh, and another thing, thing as well is when we do, um, when we do mouth breaths, yeah, so breathing inappropriately, uh, irregularly, not the way we're supposed to as, um, as babies, yeah. So when we do mouth breaths, our body releases pro-inflammatory um, what's the word for them? like hormones yeah pro-inflammatory hormones whereas when we do nasal breathing our body and our kidneys release uh, ep epinephrine is how you say it yeah, that's yeah. The one, yeah. yeah which is a anti-inflammatory hormone and the pro-inflammatory hormone is um oh, cryonite i think it's called or i don't know it's um yeah so yeah basically so yeah so when you breathe through your nose it doesn't just have the nitric oxide benefit the vasodilation benefit it also it also has a positive effect on anti-inflammatory hormones. So this has been shown to have a positive effect then. So people that do uh, nasal breathing for up to two or three hours has been shown that these anti-inflammatory hormones have a positive effect then on autoimmune diseases. So if anyone is suffering from a potential autoimmune disease, that could be caused not just by poor training, poor sleep, poor lifestyle, but poor breathing. Mm. And that's probably the most important one. Yeah. It's crazy. So... Yeah, the, the, the breath is um, is vital for performance, like you said, but also like your health. Yeah, health, stress management, all those sort of things. It, 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 yeah. it just, it taps into everything, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Why it's so important. Yeah. So you are, here's the study. Um, a research paper by Cox et al, 2014, 
exploring um, different breathing methods, healthy volunteers practicing learning techniques exhibited profound increases in the release of epinephrine, which in turn led to increased production of anti-inflammatory me mediators and subsequent damp dampening of the pro-inflammatory pro -inflammatory cytokine response. This study could have important implications for the treatment of a variety of conditions associated with excessive, excessive or persistent inflammation, especially autoimmune diseases in which therapies that antagonize pro-inflammatory cytokines have shown great benefit. So they're saying the doctor of the future will potentially be looking at the way you breathe in terms of curing disease, which is amazing. Yes, Pharmacy yes. left. Pharmacy, not pH. Yeah. Pharmacy. Yes. Like it properly said, let food be like medicine, medicine be like food. So I think that's uh, that's great. Yeah, I'm all for that. I have to check out that study myself. I might find a few interesting tips in there. Um, yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, in terms of, you know, breathing, guys, actually, light breathing is the secret in terms of, you know, optimizing our respiratory system and, and in terms of getting all the benefits we talk about, with, you know, actually breathing correctly. Um, so, yeah, it is a sign of good health and fitness. Like Sam said earlier, you know, the, the quiet breathers are the ones that are probably the most healthy. Um, so, you know, the, the example you got here, you think of like a, an overweight tourist and you've got an Olympic athlete. They've arrived at the summer games. They've got to carry their, you know, their suitcase up the stairs. Both suitcases weigh the same. Who do you expect to be out of breath? Looking at those two just on paper, probably not the Olympic athletes. So like say, it's just a sign of good health and fitness that they're not walking up the stairs out of breath, gasping for air. So um, yeah, like I say, like light breathing is the key. We, we touched on this a few times already, so I'll, I'll go for this a bit quickly. So yeah, as you know, sort of counterintuitive as it seems, taking bigger and deeper breaths when, you know, during training, when you hit the wall, does actually not get you any more oxygen than if you're breathing through your nose. And if anything, it's making it worse. So it effectively, you know, reduces oxygenation even further because again, we're releasing too much carbon dioxide. But hemoglobin is holding on to oxygen. It's not letting it go. The muscles can't get it. And then, you know, we start to feel those, you know, symptoms of fatigue and I don't know, lactic acid building up and all that sort of stuff then. Um, whereas, Light breathing, so nasal breathing, keeps you closer to those correct levels. So we're getting what we need. Um, so yeah, the pressure of carbon dioxide in the blood is, is maintained, it's higher, which then loosens the bond between hemoglobin and oxygen. So hemoglobin goes, there you go, take some of that, I don't need it. And then that facilitates the delivery of oxygen into the muscles of organs so it can be used. So it's, again, it's this, this cyclical effect, everything influences each other. So it's just trying to, you know, establish and maintain this positive relationship between all these sort of key factors. So yeah, hemoglobin, oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitric oxide, as Sam's talked about a few times. So it's, yeah, they all influence each other and it's just trying to get them to work together. Okay, so in terms of, you know, light breathing, you know, it's not something, I don't know, I, I, as Sam said, it's like things go in trends. So maybe in my, my career in the fitness industry, it hasn't come around. This is the first time it's sort of come around for me. Um, but, you know, in terms of why we're not talking about light breathing more, because, you know, there's so many benefits to it. Sam mentioned this is potentially a future treatment plan um, for certain autoimmune diseases. So, you know, it's hard. It's a hard thing to measure. So, you know, air is weightless. Um, so sometimes, you know, that can be hard for studies and stuff like that. Um, breathing can often change quickly, quickly and sort of effortlessly during the um, measuring process as well. It's, it's like when someone you're asked to focus on your breathing and suddenly your breathing changes i don't know do you do that like stuff like that sam if you're suddenly aware of what you're doing um yeah i think there's a few things you can do and there's a few teaching points you can have you can buy the um the mouth tape the, the three minute the, i think it's called 3m um tape and you just, it's just quite a light tape you put over your mouth now i know a lot of fitness i know ollie campbell who um i know you've read his book uh i mentored ollie for a few um days last year on like more business style of stuff, but he's very into the physiology. He wears the tape when he goes to bed and he wakes up and he doesn't sleep very long. He only sleeps like five or six hours a night, but the amount of REM sleep even trumps the amount of sleep that I have when I have eight or nine hours. So it's not, we know, we know with sleep, it isn't about quantity, it's about quality. As we've just learned about breath, it isn't about quantity, it's about quality. Same with training, right? Same with nutrition. So, you know, we're finding that a lot. And I think the main thing to do is, is find a type of breathing technique that works for you, that makes you more aware. Now we've got purse per lips breathing, we've got belly breathing, we've got breath focus, it's lion's breath, which Mel told me about earlier. Alternate nostril breathing has been good to improve the, um, the, the nasal cavity in terms of how, how strong they are. 
um, is, res is resonant breathing, sitali breathing. It's, it's so many different types of breath work you can do. Um, and a lot of them actually come from like yoga, but it's just, it's just making you, anything you can do that's going to make you more aware of nasal breathing would be the way to go. And what Ollie used to do is he never, he didn't start with wearing the tape to bed because that's like freak, freak, a bit freakish, isn't it? It's a bit yeah. like too out there. What he used to do is he used to read for 30 minutes a day. So he used to put the, um, the tape over his mouth when he was reading. So he was in a relaxed state. When he was reading, it just forced him to, to breathe through the nose. He wouldn't have to so much be bored, sat there, just doing nasal breathing. He'd do when he was reading his book. And he improved his body's ability to do nasal breathing because it's quite hard to do if you're not used to it. Like you can get a little bit short of oxygen if you're not used to it because, of, you know, it's just it's just something you're not aware of, you know. Like your first session in the gym, it can kick your ass. So you've got to obviously just build up to, to it. I think we can give some good um, good tips maybe next on the next uh, next one so people can actually yeah. become more aware because awareness is the first step of change. Um, and we've made them a bit more aware now. And now is a case of we don't expect every breath people take tomorrow to be nasal. But we need to get them to the point where they, they, they're aware of it so they can catch themselves if they are doing um, mouth breaths. So that's something we can maybe look at um, and, and maybe have a little hierarchy how we can build up to more nasal breathing. Yeah, definitely. It's like, the, like I say, yeah, the focus today is just getting like the, the information and knowledge out there. And then, yeah, like I always like to make sure people go away from the training with, with something. So, yeah, we'll yeah. talk about yeah, the practical tips and stuff like that now that the awareness is there. Um, Yes, and you know, I, the next book points we talked about earlier, like it's very hard to, you know, say someone is over breathing or, you know, maybe not breathing the best way for them. It's just because there's, you know, a wide variety of issues which stem from um, over breathing, which, like I say, there's no direct links. So they, you know, don't appear to be connected in any way. So some of these things, like, range from cardiovascular issues to gastrointestinal and obviously general exhaustion as well. And it's one of those things where, I remember Luke Lehman said it on sleep because, you know, sleep is one of those things that people don't get enough of. And what we're finding now is breathing, you know, we're not breathing the best way for in terms of health and general life and all that sort of stuff. And it's, it's the sort of thing where people are so used to feeling terrible, they actually don't know what it's like to feel good. So, you know, feeling terrible has just become the norm and they don't know any difference. Um, but like, you know, you start working on your sleep and you're suddenly like, oh my God, I feel so much better. I can get so much more done in a day. I'm more productive, you know, mood is better. So, um, yeah, I think that's an issue. Like, we're so used to feeling terrible these days. We actually don't know what it feels like to be good. Um, so, yeah, people just put it down to, to life or, you know, whatever they might, might spring to their head in terms of why they don't feel quite great. Um, yeah. As I was um, buying the book off Mel, I was like, right, get ready for it. I'm buying some duct tape. I'm going to go. I'm, if I'm going to do this now, I'm going to do a Sam style. I'm not going to dip my toe in. I'm going to go full hog. She's like, right, here we go. Fucking hell. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so, God. yeah, I'm going to give it a go because... um forward to hearing about that then. Yeah, and we can do a little case study. And I got the order ring so we can see how it affects my sleep, how it affects my resting heart rate, how yeah. I feel playing football, chasing all the 16-year-olds around when I'm 35. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it's all about those uh, small marginal gains. If it helps, we'll do it, innit? Yeah. Um, yeah, and like and like I said earlier, it's, you know, we've just learned to tolerate being this way, really. And so... um yeah, we don't, you know, necessarily feel the negative effects that, you know, not breathing correctly is having on us because we've been doing it subconsciously for so long. And, you know, it's just become part, part. you know, you've just laid down these motor, motor patterns in the body now and the, the body just thinks that's, that's the default way to, to function, really. Um, so to summarise then, guys, so I've sort of, I think I've covered everything I want to cover tonight. Um, so, yeah, the foundation of enjoying and improving ex uh, physical exercise is to ensure that breathing is optimally efficient. There's nothing worse than feeling like you can't catch your breath. And I, I know I've spoken to a few people in the gym over the years and myself, like I don't like sometimes doing things like a, like a boot camp because I hate the feeling of being out of breath. Um, so, you know, that can be off putting for people. So yeah, if we can get ourselves breathing better, especially at rest, that's going to then, you know, carry over into how we breathe when we're training, which means, you know, we're going to be more control. Therefore, we're probably going to, you know, enjoy it a little bit more. Um, and, you know, performance is going to improve as well. Um, and then, yeah, like, like I said, you're going to get sick of me saying it, carbon dioxide. Um, our body's relationship with it determines how healthy we can be. And it pretty much affects nearly every aspect of how our body functions. So, yeah, very, very um, important key into the sort of respiratory process. Um, so, yeah, better breathing 
optimizing carbon dioxide ensures that all these interlocking parts that we've talk, talked about in today's um, call is working together in harmony. And then that allows us then to achieve our maximum potential in terms of performance, our endurance, our strength, and whatever, you know, other aspects in day-to-day -day life. And yeah, understanding these things is sort of the first step into you know, the process of breathing better. So yeah, hopefully that's, you know, you've learned a few things from the, the stuff we've gone over today. And then when we, you know, sort of go into more classical elements of these calls, um, that, you know, you're gonna understand the reason why, which you know, is gonna create that buy-in and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna wanna practice these things and, and hopefully reap the benefits of them. Okay, so yeah, wrapping that up now. So obviously at the end of each call, we open up to any questions. So Sue, any questions, pop them in the chat. You've got me and Sam now ready to uh, to answer. If you're watching this on like a guide or anything like that, obviously you can ask any questions in the comments, just make sure to tag the coach, like the coaches, me and Sam or whoever um, in them. So we, you know, we get a notification so we can jump on yeah. and answer them. Pop the TED talk into, um... To, to do it into the notes. I think this is the talk that it, it talks about the face and how, the, how your face can change based on nasal and mouth breathing. I think this is the one. If it's not, Sue, let me know. But all I did was type in um, Oxygen Effect YouTube, Oxygen Advantage YouTube, and it was one of the videos that came up after the TED talk, if it wasn't this one. This is a really good one from the author of the Oxygen Advantage. That's a good little insight. It's about, yeah, breathing into the paper bag. Yeah. It's not the more common that I did. Yeah, I think it is actually. Yeah. Yeah, must do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess heart rate monitor is a good way of seeing if breathing rate is good. I think the best thing you can do for breathing rate, like your breathing rate is linked to your HRV, is linked to rest and heart rate, but you can do the bore test as well, where you do your nasal breathing, um, you exhale, you let all the um, all the oxygen out, you hold your breath for as long as you can. And with the bore test, you want to be able to hold for at least 40 seconds. I think if you can't hold it for 40 seconds, then it shows that like you're, you're below average in regards to your ability to obviously breathe effectively. Yeah. I'm so around 40 seconds is a good, um, yeah. The Wim Hof breathing is good as well. I think, I think there is a few contradictions between the, um, the oxygen advantage and the Wim Hof breathing. Uh, Wim Hof gets you to do like 30 power breaths. And he says by doing the power breaths, you actually increase the amount of oxygen in the body. Whereas there's been research studies shown that that's probably a little bit untrue because your body is always between 95 and 99% um, oxygen in the blood. So we're not really going to get more oxygen into the body because, as you know, the, the, the blood is already filled with oxygen. But I think that's just his way of um, explaining it with a language barrier. I think a few people have been quite nasty and picked up on his interpretation of it in the wrong way. Um, I think he means when he... When, I think he means by when you get more oxygen to the body, he means actually getting more oxygen to the working muscles and organs. Do you know what I mean? And that's, that, that's true. Obviously you can get more, and, and, and his power breath does have a very big energizing effect on the body. You do those power breaths and it increases your temperature. So you do feel, you feel more awake and it does give you um, a bit like his cold water immersion. It gives you that acute stress response. Uh, which is obviously good for strengthening the immune system long term. So um, there, there are a few contradictions between the Wim Hof method and um, the oxygen advantage, but they both work along very similar similar guidelines. It's like arguing whether strength training or bodybuilding is is better. Like they're both good for you. It's both resistance training. To which whichever one you prefer, get on with it. <laughs> what can you stick to? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I know well the aura ring that that measures. Um, respiratory rate i don't know how accurate it is um but yeah that, that measures your spiritual rate when you sleep as well so i'm just having to look on it now and like sort of if you click the eye the little eye the info it says yeah help the adult at rest 12 to 20 beats per minute and then it gives you what your beats um or you know rest per minute is so mine was 13.4 so based on that my breathing is is within those ranges so hopefully it's okay um, so yours is 13.4 breaths per minute yeah yeah Mine's 15.4. Oh. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, so going on the fact that light breathing is better, mm. yours, yours will be a better score than mine because I'm also taking maybe deep breaths because I'm not doing as many. Maybe, potentially, yeah. That's, that's interesting to learn. Yeah. I, it's, um, I kind of think it might be Gabby pointed out to me before where it's like if it, your spiritual rate goes, you know, changes, it, it can sort of indicate whether you're more in a parasympathetic state of stress or more sympathetic so obviously you know the more sympathetic you can start breathing a bit 
Yeah, I think the higher your rest, the higher your resting heart rate is, the higher your respiratory rate will be. Yeah. Based on a lot of my data, yeah. Yeah, so Sue Smith commented now his is 14.6. Yeah, that's good. I, I think between like 14 and 16 is a good score. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, but I'll look into that. Yeah, that's a, you can dig in. Yeah, because that's another, you know, another measure to be aware of. All helps, all the data. Yeah, there we go. So um, should we kick, we'll kick off next week, I think, with some um, practical ways for people to improve their ability to maximize their health through breath work, yeah? With some simple yeah. strategies, nasal breathing, picking yeah. up on it, just being more aware of it. And uh, maybe we'll buy some duct tape for the gym. And uh, if anyone walks in <laughs> to join the gym and we're all wearing duct tape on our mouths, people will be thinking, this isn't the gym for me. Or well, maybe they'll I, definitely join in this gym. Members, so I want to stick some duct tape, <laughs> stick some duct yeah. tape their mouths on. Not gonna oh, name I'd, love to, I'd love to do that to Dave Williams on 9 a.m. semi private. You won't be able to ask what we're doing eight times in a row then. How many? How many? <laughs> there we go. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in with us tonight, Stu. Um, but yeah, anyone else watching this back, like I said, yeah, any any questions you've got, check them in the comments, tag us in, and you know, we'll, we'll jump in and uh, answer any questions you've got, okay? Uh, but yeah, thanks very much. Hope you enjoyed. And yeah, we'll be back next week with the, the next installment of the, the power of breathing. Stop recording.